Hey guys, welcome back to Rock and Tube. My name is Gar. Uh, I thank you all every time for your patience because I'm sporadically updating at the moment. Um, it's all due to me. It's not you, it's me, trust me. Uh, I sound like I'm breaking up with you. I'm not breaking up with you, don't worry about it. Um, I want to update on a couple of things. Uh, I'll do uh, this bad boy right here, which is uh, a Chylobrachis species can crack in so it is a uh, an undescribed Chylobrachis species and um, she's going to lay an egg sack um, there's no two ways about it um, I have kind of a weird sixth sense with spiders I can notice things um, pretty simple things to notice which I'll explain to you when I show you the spider uh, but if you remember back to probably about um, six weeks ago when we had the Chylobrachis Huahini I said this spider looks like it's going to drop an egg sac 48 hours later egg sac in fact that egg sac we pulled and this is uh, in the incubator they have now molted from um, the eggs with leg stage and they're at uh, basically one more molt and it'll be at spiderlings. I had to change the box, right, because I'm finding, um, I don't have many flies out and about here, but on the, um, the soft coir inside here, they really like the, um, the cast skins, the exoskeletons of the uh, spiderlings. So I'm not watching, eagle eye watching on that to make sure that there's not a, a scuttle or a forehead fly infestation on there, because that could decimate them as well. So, vigilance. Um, I've got a little bit. I want. I've already recorded it. This recorded this morning because I was water and feeding uh, about the Cerebrocopus minax, which is in this long uh, fossorial enclosure here that I built before and looks like crap, but it serves a purpose. Um, well, I let that will come up in just a second now. So I let myself speak from the past and the future about it but you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, isopods are in here I think it's gonna be a video uh, in the making for a bit later on. I was gonna talk about that now but looking at this this video is gonna run over so uh, look out for that coming soon. Update on the uh, behind you there's a uh, Trichonephila Inurata madagascanensis, so the, the orb weaver spider. I'm having problems at the moment. She's absolutely fine up there, loving life in between the plants and my whiteboard. I can't use my whiteboard anymore. Um, but she's a bit small because of the white background of the, of the bloody um, of the whiteboard. The camera has a lot of trouble picking her up. It's always trying to pick up my bloody writing in the background but I don't want to move her she's absolutely fine so when she gets a bit bigger I'll be uh, really smashing the series out about, about her. I have been very sporadic like I said about uploading at the moment um, and I probably will carry on like this uh, for a while. Reason being is I got a lot of things planned uh, around um, the summer the summer basically uh, I'm going to make a series, um, I'm going to jump in a van, I'm going to take my dog I'm going to jump in a van and travel around the UK showing you guys that even though we collect these you know, um, foreign spiders from all over the world we in the UK, even though we're not renowned as somewhere that's got like crazy, crazy spiders excuse me, crazy spiders, crazy inverts at all they're out there all you gotta do is go looking for them so like I said I'm gonna jump in a van and I'm gonna spend the summer as long as Covid allows me to and I'm allowed to leave Swansea I'm gonna spend the summer traveling around I picked up seven species so far and seven nuts incredibly cool species that you either forgot about right or you didn't even know we had here so I'm going to make it informative but I'm also going to make it a little bit mental like I do, try, I try to do anyway. 
my own spin on a travel documentary and then see how it goes if there's enough kind of um, call for it I'll probably do a Kickstarter after I filmed it to raise funds to produce a DVD fuck it what else am I going to do all summer <laughs> lastly um, anyone who wants to buy t-shirts right from the website and are in the UK don't buy them through the website please just message me I have a way of being able to get you those t-shirts without you having to pay bloody import tax due to Brexit so that's wrecked kind of like uh, my UK people's buying t-shirts and stuff I've literally had to um, be uh, refunding and cancelling orders for people otherwise they're gonna be stuck with a you know 11 or 12 pound extra charge before they can get their stuff from the post office which I don't think is fair at all you know and I can't afford to pay that for you unless I make my t-shirts like 30 33 quid or something you know USA Europe and the rest of the world is not affected just us here because of brexit so yeah message me if you need to um, I'm gonna end the video here before I show you this bitch beer uh, just one more time just to say in these sporadic uploading times um, I would love it if you stayed with me um, I understand if you don't uh, I would love it if you guys want to support the things that I'm planning on doing there'll be a lot of like um, blurb coming on the website and on uh, social medias about what I'm planning to do and again I, I understand if you don't if it's not your bag you know but make sure if you want to if you like what I do or if you want to keep me doing it uh, share my stuff about uh, watch it like it share it do all the things that all these all us youtubers ask you to do and I'll see you again stay safe and for UK peeps I'll probably see you out and about on tour in the summer check it out this one then like I said Kyla Brachis uh, can kraken species can kraken so an undescribed to science a um, Kyla Brachis species very much like Discolus. In fact, to look at this on a Discolus next to each other, unless you're a taxonomist, there's hardly any way to tell. What I want to point out, right, is this all on the floor here. So she's excavated out from uh, her retreat. And remember, this enclosure was a temporary enclosure for her. These guys weren't supposed to be staying in it with me longer than a weekend but then that uh, um Hiwahini dropped an egg sack and then lockdown happened so i couldn't return the spiders then back to the spider shop to be honest while they've been here with me i've decided to keep them so uh yeah so this now have a look on the abdomen on the left hand side of the screen on the abdomen oh, left hand side of the screen left hand side of her she's battle scarred there are definitely some scratches and some scrapes although she looks like she's had a right all the time in the wild but these are monster spiders exceptionally defensive you know i'm really not a fan of ever calling a spider aggressive but if there ever if there's ever going to be one this is probably the fl most flightiest, the quickest to bite, quickest to charge and attack, stand its ground. More so with these than with an OBT, in my experience anyway. Now it always helps, right, to have um, the spider set up in its permanent enclosure. And this wasn't going to be its permanent enclosure, but it's not actually a burrowing that much. So, in my observation, Kylobrachis do very well in a fossorial tank, like like the one next to it that the um, the, the Minax, the Cyrobrogopus, is in. But also, 
they're quite opportunistic so they will take to a more of a terrestrial setup as long as there's a nice you know dark hide for them that they can web up everywhere they're prolific webbers in fact just before this video the whole of this uh front of this glass screen was covered in web we would never have seen inside it she was actually inside the retreat when i cleaned it off and came straight out charging just to find out what i was doing what we can see we could do let's see if we can just open this up and notice how gentle i'm going to try and be so there's no vibration no clattering of glass then now that i've removed the glass and zoomed in for you guys you can see that scarring quite yeah, it's quite bold isn't it? it's like um she's a black tan color almost and then there's a lighter z mark on her abdomen That's enough for me. Just make sure that goes down properly. Again, I'm trying not to disturb her too much. What makes me think, obviously the size of her abdomen to start with makes me think that she's going to um, to produce an egg sac, but also this, um, this basically mound of earth that she's excavated and the round I know this looks to you like it just looks like the entrance to a burrow, but up until yesterday, that was just like there. There wasn't this bit. And if you can see, there's the bowls coming around here as well. See, all the way around. She's going to basically seal it off. And when that happens, or if that happens, I'll try and get the camera on it, obviously, for you. But uh, forgive me if I don't because I quite like this species. Anyone who really knows me that knows me, I like black nasty bastards. And these are the, the nastiest of the lot, really. In front of you, you've got um, the large fossorial tank that I, uh, that I made myself. Ugly thing, but it serves a really cool purpose. Inside that is the uh, Cyribogopus Minax, so the uh, Thai black that uh, you saw me rehouse in the card above. I have literally just done a um, spray down, chuck some uh, cockroaches in there, and I wanted to have a quick look at uh, her development because. Remember what I said, that she looks really gravid? Well, if she looked gravid before, absolutely unbelievable now. <laughs> this is about all we're going to be able to see. That's her abdomen there. It's massive! It's absolutely enormous. I'm going to see if I can do something with this there we go Just as the common name suggests, this is a medium-sized ex haplopelma from Thailand. They are exceptionally quick to bite. They are one of the most defensive spiders on the planet. Now this is probably about an inch or two bigger than Cyriopagopus lividus, the cobalt blue. And 
they really do live up to their name. Jet black, super angry. Don't mess with me spiders.